Page 94, the Private Eye podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Page 94. My name is Andrew Hunter-Murray and tonight we are back once again at the National Theatre for an evening with Private Eye. Uh, This is the annual show where an all-star cast read out selected bits of the Private Eye annual, currently available in all good bookshops. And that cast tonight consists of John Sessions, Jan Ravens, Lewis MacLeod, Harry Enfield and, of course, the magazine's editor, Ian Hislop. Anyway, here it is. Hope you enjoy it. Good evening, Um, (laughs) and to you. Thank you very, very much for turning out. I know there's not much going on at the moment. Um, You've all got very little to do. There is a big elephant in the room, obviously. It's quite a big day. Um, uh, A friend of mine went to bed early, got up. Boris said he'd got an enormous majority. She thought, well, he's lying, so it's been quite a good day. Um, We... (laughs) This won't be a strictly topical show. We're bringing the annual to the stage. So we're looking back over the year. Um, And uh, so we will start. Private Eye, we have um, a a sort of forum for questions of our own. Um, The Prime Minister doesn't like answering questions very much um, from anyone, but we do have a very specific column. And we have asked him the most important question facing him today which is, what exactly, Prime Minister, was your relationship with the entrepreneur, tech guru and pole dancer, (laughs) Jennifer Arcuri? (laughs) (laughs) Look, I've made it a policy uh, not to answer questions about my private life. (laughs) (laughs) Even when it's not about my private life. Uh, It's about me giving people money for services rendered. Uh, Not that any services of that nature were uh, rendered uh, digitally or otherwise in this case. It was all about showing me how to find a hotspot and how to turn my device on and off. Well, mostly on. And that's all my regular afternoon visits to her flat were about. Uh, Simple matters of a floppy disk or a hard drive. (laughs) Foie. Uh, perfectly normal, may oral sex. Uh, I mean business. Fuck business. No, no, not about that. No. It was perfectly innocent. I offered her a trade missionary position. Yeah. Oh, I seem to be tying myself up in knots. Uh, or was that somebody else? Yeah. Uh, uh, wow. I know nothing about this whatsoever. Miss R. Curie says that I said uh, I don't like women anymore, except the Queen. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. Hey. Now, it, it's been a tough year financially for everyone. Um, uh, austerity obviously ended. Um, <laughs> so this year, we've been sponsored by the um, No Mark Christmas Royal Gift Department. Um, and we, we, I'm sorry, we've got to present a series of adverts for the, the luxury gifts that they want to sell you this Christmas. The Andy Perspirant. <laughs> Say goodbye to unwanted disco floor sweating misery with this amazing Andy Please. Perspirant from Pedo Links for Men. <laughs> Clammy palms and damp armpits are a thing of the past for you, if not your PR people. Perfect for tramp nightclub, news night interviews and awkward audiences with your mother. Price your job. <coughs> Choice of odours. Stinky, fishy, <laughs> whiffy. The Christmas non-sweater. Made from the wooliest of woolly excuses, <laughs> navy surplus, as worn by helicopter personnel in the Falklands when serving Queen and Country. The non-sweater works even under fire. Extremely thick. <laughs> <laughs> Colours, blood blue. Face red, goose green. <laughs> Price, £250,000 per annum from Civil List. The straightforward shooting stick. Perfect for every straightforward shooting weekend. Are you and your slightly creepy plus one going to a dodgy event that may involve money and favours? 
then don't forget your straightforward shooting stick TM. When you haven't a leg to stand on, simply open it up and hey presto, you're having a right royal time and no questions asked. Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> Price, a straightforward £15,000 loan to your wife. Warning, sit on correct end to avoid pain in bottom. <laughs> the Woking Pizza Wheel. <laughs> Never eaten pizza before? Unsure how to divide a circular dough based snack into slices at your daughter's friend's party many miles from the nearest nightclub? <laughs> then you need the Woking Pizza Wheel. A fully Woking Pizza Wheel. <laughs> which stylishly segments as it travels effortlessly across the tomato and mozzarella <laughs> surface. Price, £13 million or nearest Verbier Chalet. Warning, wheel may fall off, pizza wheel. <laughs> Everything must go, including Prince Andrew. <laughs> hurry, hurry, while the monarchy lasts. <laughs> <laughs> Not... Thank you. <laughs> That's the first time we've used props. I think it's been a huge success. <laughs> <laughs> With one notable exception. <laughs> <laughs> Not very bright. <laughs> now, it wasn't a great year uh, for the royal family, um, but it wasn't a great year for the former Prime Minister. And in, in looking back, um, I have to record, Private Eye had the final resignation letter from Theresa May. It is with great sadness <laughs> that I accept the resignation of yet another senior member of my cabinet. Myself. <laughs> I have tried to talk myself out of it, but in the end, it's a matter of principle. I would like to thank myself for my selfless and unwavering dedication to the country and for sticking with me through the good times, the first five minutes, <laughs> and the bad, the rest. I would also like to congratulate myself on the myriad achievements of my tenure. Perhaps I should list them. No, there are too many to go into, and uh, we just don't have time. Suffice to say that I am proud of my record as the second female Prime Minister, not the first, not the last, and possibly not even the best, <laughs> but certainly in the top two. As I write this, I can't help recalling the wise words of my husband, Philip, speaking one minute ago, who said... Darling, I think you should give it a rest and start packing. But I wanted to pay tribute to the wonderfully disloyal colleagues who I've been so lucky to disagree with. Can I start with Mr Johnson? I can again quote my wise husband, Phil. Come on, darling. Those leather trousers won't pack themselves. <laughs> So I shall resist the temptation to call Boris a loathsome, untrustworthy, immoral, self-seeking, over-ambitious, egotistical, two-faced Judas. <laughs> As Philip has just said... Darling, that really is enough. If you don't stop writing, I'll have to put this letter in the bin and take it out. <laughs> yes, this is an emotional moment for you. I've no doubt that many of you have tears in your eyes. <laughs> but this is no time for rancour. That will be next week when my job will be taken over by the biggest <laughs> rancour of them all. <laughs> Jan Ravens. Still up, we do try and interview people. And one of the ways we do it is we run a, a column called Me and My Spoon. Um, which is a sort of celebrity interview, a way of getting uh, relatable interviews with people who wouldn't normally give them. And we were very lucky we got Kirsty Wark to interview Dominic Cummings, um, the Prime Minister's spin doctor. Noto notoriously difficult to interview. Um, and this was the big me and my spoon interview. Mr Cummings, do you have a favourite spoon? Dumb question. Next. Are there any spoons you find help you de-stress after a long day at work? Oh, what a waste of time this is. Ask another one, you stupid fuck. <laughs> is there a kind of spoon you find especially collectible? No, move on. Just fucking get on with it. 
What was your first encounter with spoons? Not relevant. I'm a hard man, not a spoon twat. But you asked us for this interview. Shut up. You want to waste my time. You want to betray my trust. There's the fucking door. <laughs> Do you like anything spoon-related at all? I'll beat you up with a spoon in a second. <laughs> Why? Because I'm a maverick and I don't give a shit. Has anything amusing ever happened to you with... Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> A sophisticated guide to British politics. Um, We also try and cover American politics. And if you remember, early in in this year, President Trump went on record and was rather dismissive of the part that the Kurds had played during the recent wars in the Middle East. And to back up his argument, he produced his own definitive version of the great battles of history. And we're very privileged to print that version. Normandy, World War II... The Allied invasion of Western Europe. Western Europe. (laughs) (laughs) Was launched on June the 6th, 1944. (laughs) And the U.S. forces from the combined Saving Private Ryan battalions... (laughs) Stormed the beaches of France with the help of British and Canadian troops, but with no help from those cowardly losers, the Kurds. (laughs) Fact. Custer's last stand. Custer's last stand or the Battle of the Little Bigly Horn. (laughs) On the 25th of June, 1876, was a fierce battle between the Lakota, northern Porsche Cayenne, and the Al Pacino tribes <laughs> and the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the United States where General Custard's defeat <laughs> is blamed by all historians on the cowardly Kurds <laughs> not killing all the scary Red Indians or native Armenians <laughs> as they were known at that time fact the Alamo You know, the Battle of the Alamo in February 1836 was a 13-day siege when Mexican troops, not great, (laughs) (laughs) under President Old El Paso, (laughs) mostly drug dealers and rapists, you know, (laughs) they overran the American fort manned by Davy Crockett and John Wayne. The Infinity War. The Infinity War of 2017 (laughs) saw half the Earth's population wiped out, wiped out, as a direct result of the cowardly Kurds refusing to put on Lycra and fight alongside Iron Man, (laughs) Captain America, and the Black Widow. (laughs) Fact. Ladies and gentlemen, Lewis. Uh, Now, uh, it's time to go back to the royal family, who we don't just cover with adverts. We have our own um, romantic novelist, Sylvie Crin, um, who writes about the trials and tribulations, largely about Prince Charles. It's called Heir of Sorrows. And in this episode, the royal family are gathered for an important weekend at Sandringham. Charles wandered down the ornate corridors of the great Jacobethan country house, where the sound of voices reached him from behind the oak-panelled door of the cannon and ballroom. (laughs) Charles pressed his royal ear against the ancient timber. It's Major, and she's making an important announcement. Without me, it really is... But there was no time to be appalled. (laughs) Philip, one has reached a decision. There does come a time when one has to face the reality of time passing and admit that one is simply not as young as one once was. There was an interjection from Prince Philip which sounded a bit like a cough but could have been a single word. Rollocks. (laughs) Perhaps it was nautical slang from the Duke's time in the Navy as captain of HMS Irascible. (laughs) I shall ignore that, continued the monarch. What one is saying is that at a certain point, one has to stop. 
one has to take a back seat and let a younger person take the controls. There was a murmur of assent from what Charles suddenly realised was the entire Windsor family gathered for this historic announcement. First came the voice of Prince William. Top thinking, g <laughs> Said the second in line to the throne. His loyal wife, Princess Kate Middleclass, agreed. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Then came the unmistakable Californian tones of Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sparkle. Yeah, like, I think that's so, you know, wise and thoughtful and cool, and maybe we should all, like, have a group hug. (laughs) Prince Harry, Duke of Hazard, and Meghan's official consort (laughs) added... (coughs) Meg's is totes right. I mean, she's amazeballs. Charles could not believe his ears and thought to himself... Is this why I've been excluded from the gathering? Because it's my moment in history? My hour of destiny thingy? So that's it. It's decided. I shall make a royal decree and the retirement will be official. There was a loud crash as Charles burst through the door, sending the Ming Campbell vase tumbling onto the marble floor. <laughs> as he shouted at his bewildered family, Vive it myself! Rex Futurus, Rex Harrison. <laughs> the third Carolingian age is upon us. God save me. What the bloody hell are you talking about, boy? Growled Charles's father. Your father is giving up driving. He's handing in his license. <laughs> Explained Her Majesty the Queen patiently. Grandpops has got to stop, Peter, added Prince William. At a junction, before he hits anyone else. <laughs> added Prince Harry mischievously. The royal family all fell about laughing at this sally of Harry's hirsute humour, the bonhomie reducing them to fits of giggles at the thought of a member of the public being run over by the Duke's get-off-my-land rover. (laughs) Charles left the room quietly and closed the door as the chill Norfolk wind whistled down the corridor in all too familiar mockery. (laughs) To be continued. (laughs) We try and follow um, the career of proper actors um, uh, throughout the year, and this year we offered a guide, because there are a lot of award ceremonies, and uh, the Oscar ceremony, again, is very confusing. And this is a simple guide to help you spot which nationality an actor is when they win an Oscar. This is an American winning an Oscar. I was put on this earth. With a God-given talent which would propel me to greatness my whole life has been built towards this moment when I could share my genius with a grateful world. I love that you all love me. Look at me, Ma. Top of the world! <laughs> and this is a British actor winning an Oscar. Oh, gee, golly gun drops. <laughs> oh, uh, blimey. Bit pissed, actually. Uh, anyway, uh, call blimey. All right, uh, this is a mistake. Uh, all right, the old China gives a snog. Oh, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, this will get close. Um, uh, no, it must be a mistake. Sorry. Uh, Rue on custard, not down ginger. Uh, put a brew on. Um, two little pip. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Um, uh, goodness me, Mother, I've come over all peculiar. Jan Raven. <laughs> uh, we're now uh, halfway through the show, and I realise many of you won't have had a chance to look at your phones. So, uh, in order to help you out, here's what you've missed on Mail Online. Hilarious moment as Cheeky Mouse is flattened by Garden Roller. Video. 2015 X Factor winner Jack Scrubs praised as very down to earth for eating a Twix on public transport. Pussycat Doll leaves little to the imagination as she displays her very impressive physique in stylish bikini while showcasing new yoga moves on beach in Dubai. 
Whoops. Tourist 20. Dives from cliff straight onto the rocks. Breaks neck. Video. (laughs) Carol Vorderman flaunts toned physique as she walks to shops, buys pint of milk and jar of marmalade. Hilarious moment. Man dressed as Santa falls off ladder and breaks leg in six places. Video. Fears grow that former sex symbol Kim Basinger is now 30 years older than she was in 1989. (laughs) Mary Berry buys attractive new shower curtain from John Lewis. (laughs) (laughs) Viewers spot Susanna Reid asking for a second glass of water on Good Morning Britain. I felt a little bit thirsty, explains top presenter. (laughs) Squirrel drops nut, picks it up, drops it again. Video. (laughs) Swimsuit model, 24, shows off her curves in tight white sweater whilst being tragically savaged by runaway bull. Video. (laughs) Katy Perry, naked. Beneath three layers of clothing. (laughs) Buttock implants explode, sending woman 34 into space. (laughs) Video. Horrifying moment, child six bursts into tears on seeing face of Queen guitarist Brian May in Bakewell (laughs) Tart. Video. (laughs) Shopper finds live budgerigar in packet of Maltesers. It's your Christmas tree planning to kill you while you're asleep. (laughs) That's the Daily Mail online. Do keep going. (laughs) Um, We've ducked politics quite long enough. I think it's now time um, to admit um, that uh, there was a lot of shenanigans um, in the year leading up to the election, and some people got a very hard time. And... Diane Abbott has actually accused Question Time of deliberately inviting her onto the show in order to be ridiculed, and this is her response. Someone (laughs) deliberately tampered with my microphone. They turned it on. (laughs) Meaning that everybody could actually hear what I was saying. (laughs) The BBC and Fiona Bruce clearly had an agenda to ensure that I'm not seen as a serious politician. First, by inviting me onto the show, and secondly, by allowing the general public to hear me defending Jeremy's Brexit strategy of not having one. (laughs) Other politicians may not have twigged what Question Time was up to, but I quickly put two and two together and got (laughs) 3,659. Uh, We do cover other broadcasting networks, particularly radio. We were very thrilled when Eddie Mayer went to LBC and produced a number of hard-hitting programmes. This one was about hands-free mobiles uh, for drivers. Um, Eddie Mayer, LBC. Right, listeners, our next topic is should hands-free mobiles be made illegal for drivers? I've got Ken on the line. Where are you, Ken? I'm on the the i 3 and what's your view, Ken? Oh, well, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, it's just a nanny state. It's political correctness gone mad. I mean, there's nothing dangerous about using your mobile in the car while you drive, so long as you concentrate and don't get distracted by the conversation that you're... Oh, fuck it out! Oh. Oh, I'm afraid we seem to have lost Ken there. Thanks for that. <laughs> Got another caller. Hello, Julie. Hi, Eddie! And where are you calling from? The fire- I didn't know there was a fast lane on the M25. (laughs) I'm afraid we seem to have lost Julie as well. Not having much luck today, are we? Can we have a caller from home, maybe? Ah, Simon, where are you? Well, I'm safe and sound on the sofa in my front room at the home, uh, which is on a bend on the A262. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yes, I know it well. The shark band. That's right, Eddie. As a libertarian, I think people should be allowed to make their own minds up. Like this bloke I can see out of the window. <laughs> He's on the phone. He's driving his articulated lorry perfectly safely <laughs> through my front window. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thanks for that. And now over to Nigel Farage for another car crash. <laughs> Eddie Mayer on radio. <laughs> uh, talking of Farage, just time for a diary, courtesy of Craig Brown again, from Anne Widdicombe. Um, you, you noticed she was third the other night, very sadly. Anyway, this is her diary, exclusive to Private Eye. Ever since we first joined the European Union, British life has been going steadily downhill. For example, dog's mess on the pavement. The war generation went through hell, came back, and were expected just to get on with it. But when the younger generation see a dog's mess in the street, they come over all queasy and reach for the smelling salts. In fact, there's a lot you can do with a dog's mess. Left to the deep freeze overnight then painted in nice bright blues and reds, a dog's mess makes a delightfully cheery table decoration. <laughs> or save money by using it as putty or blue tack to stick up to-do lists in your kitchen or bathroom. But the snowflake generation simply can't be bothered with practical matters, no. They much prefer to bleat and whine, talk about weedy little good-for-nothings. Heaven help us! <laughs> Thank you to Anne Whittacombe. Um, this is a last poem. Um, in memoriam, Lady Marcia Faulkender. She was the private and political secretary to Harold Wilson. I'm going to read this one myself. So, farewell then, Lady Faulkender. You were famous for allegedly having an affair with Labour Prime Minister Harold Wilson and drawing up his infamous lavender list. You were also very litigious on those two points. <laughs> but now you are dead. <laughs> and can no longer sue. So we will be dropping the allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for indulging us. We will be signing books. Most of this material appears in the annual. If you want to read it again yourself, uh, better. <laughs> uh, it's um, entirely up to you. But could I say I am fantastically grateful, particularly at this time, for the presence of this amazing guest. They've got plenty else to do, and they turned up tonight. That's it for this special one-off episode, and that's it for this year of Page 94. We hope you've enjoyed listening to the episodes we've put out, and we will be back again soon with more. Until then, have a very Merry Christmas, and don't forget to buy a copy of the Private Eye Annual. There, plug fulfilled. Merry Christmas, and see you all next year. Bye-bye.